Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Hello there guys and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce growth show. And uh, as you know, we've now moved to a vlog format, which is great. And you get to see the lovely faces of uh, myself and uh, our guests, which is fantastic. And we're still doing the same kind of things we've been doing all along really. Um, around trying to expose as much value to our community as possible from experts uh, from all sorts of different avenues. Um, so the third series, as you know, is a vlog series uh, focused on some of our customers, uh, particularly how they are using Segmentify, how they deployed it, how they went about understanding how to work with us and why they worked with us. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, introduce to you a guy called Sadat Firat. And uh, Sadat is the e-commerce manager for Sephora in Turkey. And uh, he's a, a fantastic guy. He Turkish US from descent, um, lived a, a long time in Boston. Uh, so, you know, great round of experience from, from, uh, from the American market. He actually started out as a consultant uh, working for a, an enterprise uh, agency called Optaros, you, you might you might have heard of. They're uh, Hybris and SFCC demandware experts, uh, a gold partner. So picked up clearly some amazing experience from from that world. And uh, and actually before Sephora, he worked at one of Turkey's biggest leading fashion brands uh, called Epekio. So welcome to that. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Thank you. Excellent. Well, I'm really, really uh, excited to have you on the show. Um, Likewise. Apologies. Yeah. For, uh, I think I'm coming down with a call. So if I'm mumbling, apologies for, for you and for the viewers, actually. Hey, not at all. Not at all. I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, so, so, so that, why don't we start with a, a, bit of a, a bit of an icebreaker, if you like. Um, we talked earlier. I mean, why beauty? Why Sephora? How did your path cross in that sense? But I do think that beauty right now is the most exciting and dynamic business. Mm -hmm. It is fun. It is actually booming. Wherever you look, actually, you're seeing a new brand is launching. Right. And Sephora being the, the leader in the market in, uh, in luxury cosmetics. Um, I, our past actually crossed in 2018 when uh, Tur the Turkish Sephora wanted to open their own e-commerce store. Uh, they reached out to me and I said yes, and I, our paths closed, uh, uh, crossed actually. Uh, I really liked the brand. I always liked it when I was in the States. And um, since then, it has been a really enjoyable and fun journey for me. Amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing a lot more about Sephora uh, as part of this chat. But yeah, that sounds like a great, a great backstory. I mean, so in terms of the overarching theme for today's vlog, if you like, um, we talked earlier about what you've deployed, um, particularly in the Segmentify world, obviously, for, for Sephora. And one of the key areas is, you mentioned the word surgendizing, which in itself for me is, is something I'd, I'd actually love to know more about in itself. So in terms of the importance of surgendizing for online beauty brands, uh, why don't you give us your take on what that is and so on? As you know, I think every e-commerce project is, is different. In Turkey, um, in 16 countries, 16 plus countries, so for us, presence in Europe mm -hmm. um, and websites. In Turkey, we actually decided to do the project with a local partner. Sure. So we knew that we had advantages, we had disadvantages in most of the world, uh, so for us partnering with SFCC. So we working with a, with a giant e-commerce partner, there are some advantages. But we enough to bend the technology that we have locally and make the most out of it we were more agile at some points but we were lacking a couple of things here and there and actually the search was something that we wanted to improve from the get-go mm -hmm. we knew that um, our experience with search wasn't good um, and we had a lot to offer as you know um, in fashion you're looking for a red dress but in in beauty you're looking for the red lipstick which is called in literally hundreds of names it's the sun mm -hmm red it's the pomegranate red, red whatever it is the actually is trying to call the products with specific name to stand out mm -hmm. 
but you don't get the, the name or you don't, you don't get the color. For a user to find the product they're looking for or the products that they might be interested in, it's also challenging actually for us to match, uh, mix and match uh, what we want to tell them, what we want to show them. So merchandising was one of the things that you wanted to tackle from day one. And thanks to Segment 5, we actually did a good uh, thing with that. That's amazing. So can you tell me more about, um, in terms of what you mean by merchandising, and particularly, well, I'm interested because as you know, and you, you've got a lot of experience in this world, Segmentify's um, product set, if you like, kind of starts with product recommendations, push notifications, email campaigns, and obviously search. So in terms of focusing on the search element, what were you looking for in the search side of it? And how did Segmentify kind of meet that need? So the data is living. We know that what products are trending and actually unlike any other sites, maybe um, in beauty, the things change overnight. The trends change very quickly. And right. Sephora being the trendsetter, we actually have the data of what products are being looked at what yeah. products are being added to the cart and what products are being added to the wish list and stuff like that. We have all these really big data that we wanted to utilize. Yeah. It's not, I simplified it in the beginning. It's we're talking about the red lipstick, but it's more than that. If, if, if someone is looking for a product that's specifically for their need with skincare, it's specifically for their need for their skin color, skin type, whatever it is, mm -hmm. we just wanted to make sure that we offer them, we show them the best product. And the data is always, always is, is not in the, the product description. Um, it would be easy if the, if the data was like, oh, okay, this product is helping you with your pimples, it's helping you with the aging, it's helping with your night cream, mask, whatever. Yes. Yeah. There are categories. Um, what we wanted to do in the beginning was more than that. We wanted to have the data, we wanted to show people um, an answer, give them an answer from a set of things that we're actually uh, piling up. And um, like I said, Sigmanifel help, helped us um, do all of that. One thing that they, that they did was um, we know that what are what our best selling products, what are our best looked at products, and what products were missing opportunity. That was really, really helpful. Mm. It gave me an uh, example that um, every week I'm getting a report saying these products are really good. People are looking at that, but mm. no setting them to their cart. So definitely there are challenges for us to, to push the products that you want to push. Mm -hmm. And when someone is searching for a specific term or specific category, uh, we're actually showing them the product that people like her are looking for or mm -hmm. end up purchasing the product. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something uh, uh, we got way better um, and we got great results actually. And mm -hmm. still, still doing the improvements uh, with Segmentify in terms of search indexing. Yeah, no, that, that's a really interesting um, summary. I mean, I, I, there's lots of things that sort of flow into my mind. Um, obviously, you know, you've got a lot of SKUs. Uh, I think you mentioned 16,000 in, in general. So, you know, the idea of search indizing, that's not something that could be manually managed. There's just too many SKUs. Um, tell, tell us a bit more about some of the, more if you like advanced needs that you had within the search and dizing realm that you needed to make sure the platform could handle when we were talking about specific brands for example i appreciate we might not be able to mention actual brands and so on absolutely fine but you know what i mean in terms of some of the more deeper needs that you had around that can you elaborate on that a bit of course but before that i just want to hmm. You mentioned that looking at yeah. the bigger picture, people are actually, there are fangirls or fanboys uh, that are actually, they love the brand, they love the products, they follow it. Their first um, destination within the site is the brand or the category there. They love it. They right. want to see what newness is. But there are actually some other group out there and their actually journey starts with the Outside of Sephora, it takes a search with the, it starts with the search on Google, on some of the platforms. So we know that um, actually, um, sorry, I'm going to close my here. So of course, 
um, with that, when you're looking at this at this at the search uh, that's generating the traffic, you just need to get them on the site and, and respond at the best way possible. Meaning, when you are actually doing the search indexing, um, it's specific things. As an example, I can I can give this example. Um, we're working with many great brands. One of them is Too Faced. Too Faced has product names that are actually really fun. And one of them is called Damn Girl. One of them is called, um, you know, like there's actually uh, interesting things. If someone is looking for Damn Girl on Google or even within the site, sometimes it's hard for them to find the product that they're looking for or they're actually coming with different products. Even at some point, um, we know that there's a fragrance from Tom Ford. It's called Absolutely f Fabulous. It's like, there's actually a curse word be before it. Oh, so, right. <laughs> Um, it's a fragrance, it's an amazing fragrance, um, but again, all these fashion brands, all these beauty brands actually are using fun uh, words to describe their products, not necessarily the notes within the fragrance, not necessarily the color. So we work specifically with the brands and mm -hmm. to make sure that the product that they want to push or that, that, that they're best at uh, shows up first. Yeah. Um, also with high-end uh, high brands um, in Turkey, um, we are actually one of the uh, e-retailers, official e-retailers for uh, luxury brands like Dior, mm -hmm. um, Hermes, and uh, Chanel. Mm -hmm. So definitely all these brands and more has specific requirements within the sites. Um, they actually want to show their products in specific uh, categories, mm -hmm. in specific ways, even with search. Um, mm -hmm. We have to manipulate how we show things. Um, mm -hmm. Every brand wants to be uh, bundled up together so definitely there are requirements that we need to follow and segmentify search and tool helped us do that also that is brilliant so it, well, i know we were talking quite a bit about it, the differences in in this world for beauty where you were enlightening me a little bit in the sense that you know clearly is not a, a beauty customer um uh, you know if you if you love a particular brand be it i don't know benefit or dior or whatever you are homing in on that because that's the loyal brand that you follow completely makes sense um and then you were talking about some of the elements around and like you did touch on it um around for example the exclusivity side of things um and uh I mean, t tell us a little bit more about that side of it, because I think that's interesting. And then the key thing is, how does Segmentify help you to make sure that's battened down? Well, I think the, the sex appeal for Sephora globally comes from the brand portfolio that we provide, actually. Mm. Um, in the States, in the European zone, or wherever, Sephora actually makes sure that we bring the brands that has a stamp on, on really amazing products and so on. As mm. an example, if somebody actually found that the, 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 the highlighter, the contour, or, or whatever, the products that you never knew before or, or that you never experienced. So for works specifically with these brands, and sometimes we actually carry them exclusively. Yes. So the only destination in Turkey for a lot of beauty customers that they can purchase these products. So definitely when they come to Sephora, um, our job is actually make sure that we don't do uh, shopping shops, but we make sure that all the brand spaces, as an example, sephora.com.tr slash benefits, slash Christine Dior, mm -hmm. uh, slash uh, Chanel or Givenchy, all these spaces within for brands are actually impeccably done. We yes. work closely with their teams. We mm -hmm. do um, also the windows or the products that we're going to talk very closely with them. Again, mm -hmm. if uh, a specific customer is a fan of that specific brand, when they launch it, it's very easy for them to see the newness. It's very easy for them to see what's the best seller. Mm -hmm. um, and also if they actually have a recommendation for upsell and cross sell, it's yeah. easy for them to see that. You don't cross brands on Sephora. If, yeah. you're, if your journey started from a brand, you're only seeing the product from that specific brand. But when you're on a category, you're seeing all brands lined up together, mm -hmm. but also respect the brand spaces. It's never upsell, cross sell scenarios. It's never mix and match with brands. Right. No, that makes complete sense. I mean, that to me, it just shouts out the need for, you know, a platform that has that flexibility in terms of the rules and the logic that facilitate that kind of very important business continuity. Yes. Because as you said, you know, you, you can't afford to get that wrong as a brand. There are rules in place as to why you are like top tier distributors, if you like, of these fantastic brands. So it's, it's a real 
eye-opener for me to see that Segmentify can really fit the bill and help in that level of critical business need. Um, but uh, like I said, I think there is still more way, more, more way to, uh, I think there's still a lot of things we can do at the moment. Meaning um, we have to look in the data, what people are searching for. Uh, we also have a Sephora blog. Like I think every single word, every single within the site, within, whether it's a blog, whether it's the product description or anything can yeah. be searchable. Therefore we can suggest people that as an yeah. example, well, if you actually purchase something and if you're looking for a customer service number, you shouldn't be looking your the, the customer service number within the site. Where is it? Where should I call? You should just mm -hmm. customer service on top yeah. of, in the search bar and sh something should pop up. If you're yeah. actually looking for returning your product and if you don't know where to and, or how to, you should just type in return and yeah. then the article related with it or the frequently asked question related with the topic that you're looking for should pop up. These yeah. are steps that you definitely want to evolve uh, but we are not there yet uh, we're, we're very excited about the, the what's what's coming up and I know that uh, segment is also uh, adding a lot of feature in their search and dizing tool so absolutely in that together uh, we are going to provide a much better uh, search uh, functionality and experience to Sephora users in Turkey that is fantastic I mean, um, it, it's so it's so great to hear that. I mean, um, there's a number of things that I was thinking about around because of again the the, the the large number of SKUs that you have, and the fact that you need to make sure that where there are, it's not as simple as saying other red stuff or other best selling stuff. That's just not going to wash for the reasons we talked about earlier. And actually what you're saying is that there are special names that brands use and so on. It's critical therefore, isn't it? That because Segmentify has two engines effectively, as you well know, and one of them is tracking all the customer behavior in, in, in super, super quick time, but also tracking the products as a separate machine learning engine. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Because it, it's actually exclusive and it's saying, no, you know, within these constraints, here are the actual other upsell and alternative products that we're a allowed to show you, but B are very, very accurate in the moment for when that user is using that search tool, which is really interesting. I mean, you, you also mentioned the roadmap and, I, and, I, and obviously I, I'm, it's fantastic that you're able to push us and, and continue driving the roadmap with us. And again, I think this is one of the things you were talking about, um, you know, working with a, an agile and local um, kind of company that can really sort of work hard with you and the culture fit is incredibly important. I think, uh, you know, when we were talking earlier about when you select, uh, you know, somebody to work with, which is really encouraging. Um, just on that note, um, I know we mentioned it earlier, but one of the things we are looking to to involve um, in in the search side of things is, is a is a kind of a merchandising element, um, whereby uh, you've started to get your search results pages faceted faceted search pages, um, merchandising actually, um, actually merchandising category pages, um, almost like a search and merch type tool. How, how, how important do you think that is in terms of Sephora and in the wider sort of remit of what we're doing on the roadmap? Well, when we look at the heat maps within the site, we always, I mean, th that's probably everybody. We always see that people are hitting the, the main banners if they're coming from the homepage. Yeah. But know that they're hitting the first thing they hit is the the the, the menu on top the hamburger menu yeah. and also when they open it it's the filters right. so we know people are specifically looking for something yeah. and it's actually all this filtration but to instead of going adding steps and steps as an example if i'm going to a vacation tomorrow i need sunscreen that's spf 50 mm. that actually tinted because I like it like that way and maybe I want it to be vegan I'm just making this up all yeah. these three requirements I should I don't have to go like sunblock and this and this and this mm. I need to I can type in I want a product this 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 mm. and, and whatever does the site offers and whatever other products you're offering should mm. be specifically to your needs mm. and that's where we're trying to go currently actually yeah no. Yeah, like I said, because um, we are also working on the attributes pool, there are some things that Segmentify can do, but there are also a lot of things that we can provide. 
Um, all these products that we carry has a very extend, extensive attributes. Mm -hmm. So we are actually piling all these attributes and adding new ones on the SKUs that we carry to give them a more meaning then yes. we actually cluster them better later. Yeah. And once you do that, um, yeah. you can actually show them to the customers with the specific needs or specific products. Mm -hmm. I, like to talk, I like to talk with my phone. I, like, I, I, I have a relationship with Siri. I always ask her questions. Yes. Yeah. Him now, I switched, <laughs> I switched voice to a male. But um, <laughs> I do talk, I ask questions and my questions actually starts, it's a full sentences. It's never a uh, find red lipstick. It's never like these things. I'm always asking questions. I think um, these habits, these human habits that we are actually adapting right now, uh, yeah. we need to do the same thing within the site. We yeah. know that uh, for years and years, Amazon, Facebook, and so on, has been a huge fan of voice recognition, voice yeah. um, with, mm -hmm. with Siri and so on. Mm -hmm. um, that's also gonna come up hopefully within the, the Sephora world um, one day. But now we're trying to make our, our merchandising or our um, database smarter so we can actually respond to these needs in the upcoming future. Very interesting. Um, so the voice side of it, that, that is quite exciting. I mean, so obviously more and more people are using Siri, using Alexa to live their lives rather than going to a keyboard and typing something in. I, I'm not there yet, actually, myself. I don't have one. We don't as a family. I know lots of our friends do. Um, so how important is it, do you think, for Sephora to actually be able to um, handle that kind of long tail voice search from both a digital marketing perspective and on site and so on? How does that, do you have any, um, do you have any insights around that? Well, we do actually, as Sephora Turkey, we are um, part of the European zone. And in, as you know, Sephora is a French company under the Louis Vuitton group. Um, mm -hmm. And Sephora headquarters uh, has a, an amazing team, digital team, that's actually working on innovation, yeah. working on what we can do better, and that gets distributed to the countries to, yeah. be, to have one voice actually together. Sure. So it's definitely in the, in the works that all of these things that today's customer need um, actually, is Sephora trying to, to uh, adapt. If you actually look at many business cases globally, you can always see Sephora's name is one of the, the you know, innovators. If you go to a Sephora store, you can actually experience all these like virtual artists or recognition or any, any tool that's actually interesting. Barcode reading to get more information about a product, watch videos while you're in the store, try it actually on yourself so you don't have to try every lipstick on, on you. All of these things to make the experience yeah. better using the digital channels, I think is in the core of uh, Sephora for so long. And mm -hmm. as I said, um, uh, the European teams are working really closely on that to um, make the best experience for every Sephora user. Uh, we, as you know, we're trying not to be, um, it's not Sephora Turkey, it's Sephora. The brand itself is very strong and we, are, uh, we want to do our best to make sure that we do our job in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely there are a lot of works being done uh, to make Sephora more digital within every region. That's awesome. And, and, I'm, and I'm really excited actually that we get to work with you, you know, and, and drive forward search and, and all this kind of new innovation that's coming out. That's, uh, it's really exciting. Um, just, just going on to one last thing, I suppose, in, in this particular theme. Um, you did mention it earlier, but I, I thought it was worth just drilling down on just very briefly. And that was the importance of the data in Trendify, I believe, um, within, within, our, uh, within our products set, if you like, that has been really useful for you. And one thing we did touch on was that there was certain information that you weren't getting, but with Trendify, you managed to get that. Can you, can you just tell the guys a bit more about what that was? So when I was younger, I was actually waking, waiting for Saturdays to, to, to listen to the pop charts. I was like, <laughs> oh, who is going to be number one this week? Yeah, it, almost, it almost feels like that, actually. When you get to yeah. report, I mean, you can get to report anytime you want. Yeah. But, uh, when I get to report from my team and I look at it and I say, oh, these are the star products. And these products, even though we have investments behind it, yeah. We're building traffic. We don't see the conversation conversion that we were supposed to see. Yeah. So something is wrong. It yeah. gives us an insight of maybe something is wrong within the description. Maybe we're not explaining it. Yeah. 
an example, maybe it's an SPF product, which it doesn't mention, or it doesn't mention what number of SPF, or we don't mention the, uh, the, the, the ML of product, mm -hmm. of product, but we don't yeah. mention it in the description. Mm -hmm. It is always something. Yeah. If that's not that, um, it, is it the price? Is it too high for the consumer? So we go look the competition or, or how much the product is priced within other uh, retailers if they carry it, if they, don't, like, if they don't carry it, the line of category, what's the average price? Is it that? Is it an, an above psychological you know, um, price point? Yeah, yeah. Things we can evaluate and then we can say, this week we need to do this, this, this. Um, we are trying to be very agile with the actions that we take with the products. Also, yeah. we're also trying to be very agile with the promotions that we do. Um, it's, it's in, within Sephora world, it's always fun and we like to give benefits to our users. Mm -hmm. It's not always discounts. It's actually experiences. It's actually the products that they want to, to carry. We have an amazing loyalty program. We also rolled out in Turkey that people love. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely we try to make the most of it. If there are products that we know that are not getting the hits that we want them to get, we are trying to push it. And this data comes from the segment by trying yeah. to um, the panel actually. Um, yeah. So um, I do think that uh, in our region, uh, unlike in the States, people use their cards as wish list. Yes. Like I'm gonna add these to my card and I'm gonna never buy them or I'll buy them if there is a discount or if, there, if something happens. After the payday, it is always something, but they use the, the cards, the wish list. Exactly. Exactly. So we, all, we can also track the trendify what are the most popular products that are being added to the cart. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can say, should we send them an email or should we do something else with the product? Yeah. Because these products are ranking up. Uh, so what actions should we take? Um, mm -hmm. We work very closely with the eCRM um, internally. We, we work very closely with marketing. So yeah. definitely uh, a little brainstorming and we take actions for these products and, and we try to make the most of it, actually. Absolutely. Now, that's brilliant. Actually, I, I have a quick question for you. Um, do you, I haven't, I haven't looked at the site, but do you already have a, um, I can't remember what you call it, but on your comment about the basket being used as a wish list, I completely resonate with that. I, I do it myself, actually, with obviously different stuff. Um, but I know certain brands almost have a customer login kind of personalized page. Do you do that as well? We, like, I think we do believe in personalization a lot, but uh, we have somewhat of a personalized page, uh, but we are also not there yet with the okay. personal offers. Yeah. Uh, also, that's one side effect of not being on the global solution. Uh, no. Um, like I said, being in the, working with the local solution, we have pros and we have cons. Yes, yes. Um, we are getting better with the CRM integration and so on to be able to offer uh, a personalized things to yes. users. Yeah. Um, but it's actually a 360 right now. It's not yeah, yeah. personalized, but that's definitely where we want to go eventually. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense because I was just thinking clearly Sephora is a very, very strong brand. You know, it's, it's very much to do with a brand and you're not just selling stuff for sure. And I was just thinking of Liberty of London, for example, you know, because they're, they're one of my, I used to work in, a, in another merchandising kind of company and that was, and they were their client. And uh, I just remember that they had this kind of, and they were, they ended up on SFCC as well, but they had a, like you say, a personalized page, but um, like you say, it's all, it's all on the roadmap, if you like. Um, so, I mean, that, that for me has been really, really insightful in terms of our sort of merchandising exploration around um, what you were looking for, some of the real kind of complications actually around the brand and how Segmentify have kind of fitted those needs, which is just fantastic to hear. Just going into sort of a slightly broader question. Um, I'm really interested, obviously you're, you're based in Turkey now, lots of experience from multiple countries and, and markets and so on. What, um, what does e-commerce look like in, in Turkey in, in general? The only word I can say it's booming. It's booming. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's insanely booming. I think, um, the e-commerce e in Turkey is actually has been on the uprise for so long. And with this pandemic, I think we had the, the probably uh, the, dig the digital transformation of seven years and seven weeks, as they say. It's, right. It definitely applies to Turkey. Um, we are, um, we were a little bit behind the, the 
well-developed countries with mm-hmm. the, the, the share that e-commerce takes from retail, the percentage yeah. e-commerce takes from retail. But I do believe that when we see the numbers for 2020, it's going to change because uh, it's actually becoming a really a huge playground in Turkey. Uh, wow. International uh, investors that are uh, mm-hmm. very yeah. interested in so many big companies. Yeah. Um, and also, um, like you mentioned, I'm coming from the United States, where convenience is number one driver for people to purchase things. Yeah. In Turkey, it was for so long, not convenience, but value. Right. Um, so there are a lot of like private sales sites, the marketplaces, and so on. Mm-hmm. But now it's changing because people don't want to waste their time. Now they're afraid to go to the, the shopping malls, maybe. Uh, there is definitely a digital help for them to get the products that they want or the experience that they want to to experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we definitely want to be a part of that. But the, the scenery for e-commerce in Turkey is really, really amazing. I do, I do think that it's, it's going to places. That's so exciting, isn't it? You're right in the heart it of it. <laughs> with, with, you know, with a fantastic brand right in the middle of a, of a booming um, e-commerce landscape. Fantastic. Just, just on that note. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just on that note, actually, um, what do you think the future of e-commerce then looks like? Not only in Turkey, Turkey, I think, I think in general, yeah. Um, yeah. the future of e-commerce is for me personalization. Right. Um, every skin color is different. Every, every fingerprint is different. So definitely the journey needs to be customized per person. Yeah. Um, my reason, even, if, even I am Sadat, 41 year old male, going to sephora.com.tr, my reason changes every other time. My, yeah. today's, aim is I'm looking for a day cream. Tomorrow's aim, I'm looking for a gift for my friend. Yeah. The other day, I'm actually just going to the beach and I, I need some sunscreen. All mm-hmm. of these things actually, it's the, the, the journey of this person is always different. Yeah. And if, if you actually show the same homepage to the same person, mm-hmm. one of them is a 16 year old girl that's actually looking for fun, more interesting brands. One of them is actually uh, interested in sustainable vegan brands, one of them is interested in really high-end, you know, um, very expensive creams. Mm-hmm. All of these people have different experiences. I don't think you can actually welcome them anymore with the same experience or the page or the banners or the products or the upsell process. So yeah. I think um, we do believe that um, creating, not in the traditional sense, clusters, but I think uh, creating personas that's going to make sense in the long run and making pools and start filling them up with people who are most likely uh, has the same patterns of buying things together. And I think that way you can customize the journeys, you can customize experiences and definitely you cannot do that alone. You need a partner and, and actually who's investing in personalization. I do think that that's definitely going to be the future. When I open up a page, I do want, it's sometimes fun. Some people actually sometimes go, some sites go above and beyond. They're like, oh, you're actually uh, coming to the site from Istanbul. Here is the weather for Istanbul. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe not to that extent, but yeah. the personalization is something that uh, is going to be the future. Uh, yeah. If not, uh, I think pers- in the true sense of personalization is going to be the future of e-commerce. Yeah. My- no, absolutely. And uh, I completely agree. I mean, not because I just work so mentally, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, what, what I was going to say, actually, some of the interesting things you mentioned there were serving up more accurate experiences, I suppose, on the web pages um, for different segments or clusters of people. Like you say, bargain hunters versus VIPs versus young guys versus old, whatever. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we are building integration with Styler um, because Styler basically gives a, an e-commerce team a very speedy way of creating multiple content pages for different segments of users. Um, so we're kind of pushing the boundaries of that integration by doing exactly as you've just said. It, you know, there's one level is saying, here's a VIP user coming to your website, you need your personalization, your personalization engine within the search widgets or the on-site recommendations or whatever to be highly relevant to that particular person in that moment. But what if you could go to the next step and say, not only are you providing the correct and very accurate 
alternative or you know um, appropriate products for that user but also the entire page is geared around that segment user so the VIP for example goes to the new in uh, page for example and not only are the recommendations and the category page only spot on but also the content around it and the whole page is geared towards that user but then if you have a for argument's sake a discount shopper going to the same new in page then the entire content of that page is entirely different and geared towards that particular user instead with probably a slightly different set of recommendations and uh, and search results or whatever it might be um, because of course they're looking for more cost-effective products than the VIP. So that's interesting you mentioned about that sort of next level of, um, of personalization amongst other things. Um, so it sounds like it could be quite interesting to um, see how that integration helps brands like Sephora and, and where, where brand experience is so important. You know. It is important, but I think also the data is as important as this. Um, like, you know, understanding the omnichannel behavior of customers, how much they spend online, how much they spend offline. Mm. Um, clustering is actually segmenting all these yeah. um, users is definitely a challenge. And there is not only a couple of layers, there are so many layers that needs to be uh, think, uh, thought of. And definitely uh, that's something that is going to bring um, an, an joyful, personalized experience to the end user and a yeah. huge conversion to the brand. So definitely something, like I said, uh, first data, then the right partner, then actually understanding the customer and customizing all these steps for them mm -hmm. is I think the, the, the recipe for success, to be honest. hundred percent. And it's interesting you say, because the, the first client that we're testing the integration with is exactly as you just said, it's dead without the right data and the right segmentation. So actually um, we are working with and this is quite exciting, I find. We're working with one of our competitors, right? That iClothing has for segmentation. But we aren't sort of, we aren't sort of um, scared of that. You know, we, we want to embrace this market and, and create the best solution for the client. And so we're saying, well, that's great. You've got this segmentation, which has been brilliantly done by this, this competitor. And you've got your VIPs. You've got your discount shoppers. You've got your laps. You've got your X, Y, Z, and all these other clusters you were talking about. Why don't you bring them in via XML or over API or even manual upload on, a, on a, um, some kind of uh, polling you know, system, flat file type, type situation, get the data in to segmentify and then use that data to drive those segments to then drive the correct page and recommendations to that user set. So absolutely bang on in terms of, I think, needing that end to end solution from the data end. But the great thing about segmentify I suppose in that sense is the ability to have that level of customization that can say do you know what yeah bring it on we'll, we'll bring in the segments from that competitor we'll do the work you know and then and then make it work for the client and also we don't actually use uh, we don't work with segmentify for personalization yet mm -hmm. I will never what might happen in the future but uh, the other thing that I see benefit for the tool so far my experience with the segmentify trendify Searchandising and all of these is, yeah. um, as you know, the digital talent is actually shrinking if you compare it to the companies in need of digitalization. So, meaning that you're not everybody is working with huge teams. Sometimes the teams are small and they're juggling a lot of balls at the same time. So, when actually your tool is strong and it gives you the flexibility to do things very quickly. Yeah to report very quickly and you have a local support yeah. uh, third party like your, like segmentify that's actually a really good benefit for for companies like us just because mm -hmm. we do things very faster very yeah. fast um that's definitely something that we also value uh yeah. here um otherwise yeah. you know if you're doing all these scenarios by yourself you need to dedicate a person now that person needs to get the reports and then another person needs to evaluate the report yada 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 so mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a chain of, you know, an unbroken chain that's never going to work. So with a team that's actually already very effective, how we can actually make the most of their experience um, within these tools that they're using. And I think Segmentify provides marvelous uh, back office and the support on that. Yeah, absolutely. And as you know, it's one of our key values is 
is that customer success team, that managed services team that have those you know, monthly or weekly reviews with our clients and drive the best practice and optimization and are an extension of your team. And I see that time and time again with so many episodes actually here where it's been critical. And I found it's all been, it's all really battened down with technology, serving the client in putting it in absolute pole position every time. And then the third thing I think is transparency and culture. And I think those three pillars, if you like, have been absolutely phenomenal to help, genuinely help the e-commerce community. And in the te- terms of transparency, we found that by not holding on to ransom in terms of you know, long contracts for billing, uh, you know, pr- price changes, every time you turn your head, oh, there's a cost of this consultancy or this setup or that, all of that's off the table. It's all just completely transparent, monthly rolling. You know, we have to work really hard to continue driving those gains because of that transparency. And I think that's a fantastic way to, to do business because um, you can't get complacent at the end of the day. So I'm really glad that you're saying those things and it's actually working. Uh, fantastic feedback. Um, but uh, I mean, that for me was brilliant, really, really insightful and interesting. Thank you so much for that. Oh, for thank that. You. Um, I feel lucky that I, I love digital. I love, breathe, eat digital. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely for people who are out there that might be watching this and they're not in the business and they, they you know, aspire to be an e-commerce yeah. manager or in this business, I do, I do recommend it. It's definitely one of the most dynamic, most fun, um, yeah. Yeah. enjoyable uh, fields that you can be in right now. And yeah. Definitely. And jump on the wagon on the right time because uh, yeah. so many companies, especially after the pandemic, I don't think our world is going to be the same ever. It's it's changed. The, the, the habits are changing. It's changed in a way that people, you know, we had that ropo effect before, research online, purchase offline, vice versa. Now it's actually becoming a lot of the research online, purchase mm-hmm. online. If not research online, purchase offline, but definitely the digital is to be in the heart of every transaction from this point on Absolutely. it's getting more and more important so uh, definitely whoever is out there that wants to be in this business i strongly recommend it yeah and, <laughs> and always find a team that you feel uh, uh, you know i was lucky to have a team that's amazing i was yeah. lucky to work with uh, companies like yourself that actually uh, provided an excellent service uh, if you have lined up these things, it's, it's definitely a very enjoyable journey in this. 100% completely agree. It has been an, ex- uh, I, I was just talking to one of my, one of my partners yesterday um, and uh, just saying how blessed we are to be in e-commerce right now, actually, you know, and I appreciate some verticals have seen a drop in demand um, temporarily, I believe, but obviously others have gone through the roof and, and there's been an accelerated shift to really get proper in the e-commerce digital space. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel that it is a, a such a, a blessing to be in this sector. And I, I am very, I'm sure we are both very grateful to be in that space, you know? Um, so uh, just to sort of finish off a couple of things very quickly. Um, if, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, I'm talking sort of best practice or Sephora as a brand, uh, or want to get in touch and connect with you for any, any reasons at all. What's the best way that the guy, that the guys can get hold of you? I have to say it's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the best way is because sephora has i told you sephora has that sex appeal that so many companies wants to to work but i think the best way would be linkedin sure. uh, um definitely it's okay. uh, not by myself there is a huge team in there yeah. uh you know uh we cannot do this alone so definitely all the directors of sephora and all these managers or executives within the com- company um, if they have a product or any, any ideas that's, that can be beneficial to Sephora Turkey specifically, mm-hmm. um, they can find me on LinkedIn or they can find anybody uh, within the Sephora team. I'm sure we'll respond. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great idea, actually, get, <laughs> getting some feedback from people out there. Um, and then one last thing I'd love to ask all my thought leaders um, is just delve into your life experience, uh, your 40 plus years on this planet, and... Um, Give us one nugget, whether it's personal, about your passions, is it about life or is it about e-commerce or Sephora or fashion or beauty? Give the guys one sort of golden nugget to go away with, to, to remember you by. Well, I think I just said it. I think it's yeah. actually definitely, um, uh, with Sephora, one thing that I value is the, the, we are actually in the process of making 
people feel better about themselves, me, me including. Um, it's, it's feeling good about yourself, valuing, you know, your, what is important to you. Definitely that should be your foundation. Once you have that foundation, once you have your, um, ambitions in the right place mm. and when you have your tools, you know, um, you, it's, you're unbeatable. Um, and again, digital is a, such a fun environment, actually. Mm. It's, there are not a lot of egos like any other, you know, people want to yeah. do things. They want to create things. They're excited yeah. of like, this side is up. Oh, I'm excited. Now what's next? We should do a mobile application. This yeah. mobile application is done. What should we do next? Add voice recognition. Like all, there's always the next step that's in mind. So I do enjoy actually being in digital for people who would, you know, take from this experience. One thing I would say, be true to yourself. Mm. Definitely, um, go for what you believe in and uh please make sure keep good people around you personally and professionally once your surrounding is strong you're stronger so that's definitely the one thing i can suggest to people 100 percent. and it's, it's interesting because a lot of that stuff if anyone if anyone watching is is think, think about what's about saying and thinking how do i how do i get that so how do i how do i learn up my ambitions or how do i you know get those foundations in in shape um, do check out some of the other episodes because there's a few life coaching and personal development ones on there that, um, that might actually help you to do that. But um, honestly, so that's been a great uh, chat. Really, really enjoyed it. And um, absolutely. And, uh, and, and everyone watching, I hope you've really enjoyed uh, the insights that Sadat has been able to give, us, give, give us today. Um, just, le uh, just remains for me to say, uh, if you haven't already, please do pop over to uh, the e-commerce growth show uh, webpage, uh, which is segmentify.com forward slash podcast actually still, but we, we might have to change that um, or e-commerce growth show actually, I think. And um, so you can get everything there. Um, previous episodes of the podcast and also all the vlogs and so on as well. Um, if you um, want to leave any reviews or give us any feedback, um, please do so. Uh, or you've got any particular topics you want us to go over. Um, please email me anytime at phil at segmentify.com. Um, but uh, thank you once again for that. You're very welcome. This was very fun. Thank awesome. You. Yeah, me too. Uh, I had fun too. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all again soon.